Welcome to the beautiful world of aquascaping. And welcome to my humble home. What do we do today? We will do the maintenance of my aquarium and that's how I'm gonna learn how to do it. The question rises, what kind of maintenance did you do so far? How old is your tank? Probably like three months. I read the comments on the previous video where we talked about this and I expected people to come at me for being such a noob and people were so nice in the comments like towards beginners. So big shout out to you guys for not being judgmental. This hobby is the most supportive hobby I've ever been to. The percentage of the not creative critical comments is really low. You might get like one or two comments yes. under, under each video which are, and this is going on for years. So guys, you're the greatest. Absolutely, yeah, this, this channel is awesome. I like being here. I think it was a couple of days ago where I, um, put some more water in because it went so low. I meant to do it Before today. Before we continue, by the way, low, the skimmer, mm -hmm. it's too high. You need to push it down. Okay. Because if it's too high, then you have this really annoying sound. Oh yes, now, now I know why. <laughs> you really need to compensate for the evaporation mm -hmm. because this doesn't look good. So if the water level is lower, then you can see through, it's not beautiful. You mm -hmm. can see the residues of the yes. evaporated water. You actually have tap water, so which is a problem. Hungarian tap water is really, really hard. Mm -hmm. So you have a lot of calcium and magnesium in it, and that is a big problem. Other than that, I need to congratulate you though because the whole development of the layout is spotless. How often do you change the water now? Um, well, that's why we said that you're gonna show me how to change entirely all the water. So now I'm just, you know, um, putting some more water in when the water level gets lower. You really need to change the water at least one time per week. For this aquarium size, if I want it to be, you know, really spotless, I would do it twice a week. I would do it probably 30 to 50% twice a week. Uh, which, if you have a very good water change system, will not be a problem. When you're building an aquarium, it's almost as important to have a good water change system as to have good technology with the tank. Because if you do a nice tank and you don't have your water change system done, you're gonna have a disaster and you're gonna turn away from this hobby. Yes, please show me. So let's start by that. <laughs> Okay, so here we go. I've got two empty hoses for you right now. Mm -hmm. The only thing is that you need to store these somewhere. That's the least of the problems, yeah. This is the pressure side. This goes on the tap. You're gonna put that on the tap, so you're gonna be able to use the tap normally. And then you can close this, and then this wouldn't let the water flow down. It will let the water come out and go. Okay. I get to it. the tank, actually. This one has the 12 per 16 millimeter diameter. I need to convert it to a bigger hose. You cannot clog them as easily, so I really like to use them for a longer run. When you close this tap, the pressure of the tap will go into the hose, and you're gonna have pressure here. Thank you. You don't want to have these taps at the end, mm -hmm. because these will not withstand pressure. You okay. will need these okay. for the drainage. Okay. And then you can just plug this in, Mix the water normally with the tap in vertical mm -hmm. position, open the tap, see the temperature. The temperature should be the aquarium temperature, which is right now 24, 25 degrees Celsius. I close this, I leave this in the t at the tap, I walk to the tank, I take this, I press it and the water will come. I usually just direct it on the glass or on a, on a wood or something. Here, I would probably put it on the glass in the back, like that. Mm -hmm. And you can probably fill this in about five minutes or so. This is the fill-up part. This is the second part of this mm -hmm. whole process. And the first part of the process would be draining the tank. This is a 12 by 16. This is a 16 by 22 just put it in and then you restrict the flow a little bit and you're able to be more precise with a smaller hose and move around the tank a little bit more easily. This one goes into the toilet and this one is in the tank, right? You store it filled up with water. If it's filled up with water, 
the gravity will help you take out the water from the tank, which is higher than the toilet, which is here. Open the tap and the gravity will pull uh -huh. everything out. Don't forget that you need to open the other tap. Isn't it like really heavy if you fill it with water? So three, four kilos, you should be able to lift that. Yeah, yeah, for strong it's, women. It's not heavier than your cat. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> She's four. She's four kilos, big cat. Big. big. That's a, that's like a normal Is it adult now? size. Is cat. it now? My my mom's cat is like eight kilos. Is she around? Can you bring it? Oh no no sorry. Uh, I I thought you asked if if the cat is round. I mean he's really round. <laughs> is the cat round? Yeah. <laughs> How are we not gonna suck the fish out? That's a good point. You have two possibilities. Possibly number one, my style. I just don't go near this hose to the fish. So when I'm moving around. You can see that the fish will not stay where the hose is, they're gonna go away. If for some reason they're interested and they just go close, the moment when they feel the suction mm -hmm. of the water, will they will be usually afraid of it and they will escape from that point. If not, I'm just jiggling a little bit and the movement itself of the end of the hose is enough for them to be scared and just go away. Draining, eight minutes, filling up, eight minutes. If you're not ready within 15 minutes then I'm doing something wrong then your uh, water change system is not invented properly it's not planned properly but right now it is I'm gonna give this hose clamp to you as a present of from green aqua Aww. this one would probably be good like this and put the hose clamp on top here Aww. yeah I know this <laughs> is a very tough thing because this is supposed to hold this hose in place okay so this is the and don't leave it here please because you're gonna flood everything I promise. Yeah. Every aquascaper did it at least <laughs> once in their lives. <laughs> I took a lot of time to explain this to you and to you guys because this is one of the most, most important elements in aquascaping. Look how interested they are. They are all there. Yeah, I know. They're very curious. And let's start working. First of all, we need to clean the glass. I would use this uh, edgy scraper from Chihiro's actually, and I'm gonna teach you what, what I do, and then you can do it yourself. You can do this not only during maintenance, so when you walk by the tank and you see some edgy here and there, you can just take this out and use it. There are two possibilities. Once you clean the tank at the top, just move it down, up and down normally, and you can already see the chunks of algae getting away. The second part, when you move next to the silicone, you can tilt it like in 45 degrees, and then you can grab in into those little corners a little bit better. When you move down and you eventually have some residue here, like sand, which you don't have now, but still, if there are little particles that could scratch the glass, then you should not lift it up from here. So what you do is you put it against the glass, push it down, release, hold it up, push it down, release. When I'm done, I'm always checking what I did from the side, through the side glass, because you can see better the algae residue. I can see it through the front glass that it's not perfect. Check this out from here. Check this out from the front. Gary doesn't have any job today. We are doing all the maintenance work, right? He's only helping and ordering pizza for himself. Yeah, that's a race for me. I've got another present for you. Oh, I was looking at this. It looks so nice. Yeah. This is the Chihiro scissors curve type. My first problem is that I cannot reach in the tank properly because the Cypress Helfery is oh, yeah, it's, it's... really long. It will cover everything and it will obstruct the light from getting into the tank properly. Don't trim it horizontally. Always do it at an angle because it will look more natural. I do it almost at the water surface or a little bit below the actual water surface here. So you're like a plant hairdresser. It's like a plant hairdresser, yeah. Okay. Also don't trim it on the same length. 
So it's like you trim a couple at that length and then one centimeter higher. I removed some mm -hmm. that was leaning against the side glass because I really want the black background to be visible on this side. The tank will look much cleaner if you have an accentuated right and left side. Regular fishnet and anything that floats up to the surface, you can just remove it with a fishnet, okay? Mm -hmm. Trimming the tank takes a little bit more time than changing the water. How often do you do that? As often as you need it. So if you think that it's too overgrown, like right now, then you're gonna do it. Trimming the foreground can be done with the curved scissors that you have there. And I will start trimming at the foreground only. Can we stop the filter? So we stop both the skimmer and the external filter. And then we're moving to the foreground. And what I do is I just move my scissors gently and clean all the foreground so that I can see what's happening. Mm -hmm. And I trim the Monte Carlo and the hair grass together. I'm making sure that I'm not cutting too much because the bottom of the plant is not beautiful. If you let it grow too much, then you will have a problem at the bottom. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to be as you know even as possible. If this would be this thick mm -hmm. and you would cut it all at this point where we're at right now, mm -hmm. it would be absolutely yellowish. nice and cool. Let me see what you do. Yeah, it's nice and cool. Try to be very systematic, so move from stripe to stripe, because if you just cut here and there, yeah, yeah. it's not going to be uniform. So go from left to right or from right to left or whatever you need. Along the front glass, you can do actually this. Put the scissors against the glass and do it in 45 and then, and in that way, you will have a nice 45 degree angle slope. This small rock is not visible. It's covered by plants. So I'm trying to just cut a little bit more around this. It seems so easy when you do it. I can see that this microsorum, it's kind of full of algae and only the parts that are, you know, died off. So I'm going to trim these. The Amano shrimp are molting. That looks really gross, actually. I know. What I did before I came, I cheated because Gary has sent us the pictures. That was me, not Gary. <laughs> it was and what I did is I put the current state of the tank next to the original idea from the video. My main goal with this is to bring the current status closer to the result that we had after the build. Well, the stones are not visible at all. We take a bag of stones and just put these stones somewhere where they will accentuate a little bit the look. I've got another picture and this was the um, ADA India event and we have this 60p tank oh. in the gallery and it's like an island yes. so we need to like accentuate the island here in this one this wood is absolutely useless in the background it's not lit you don't see this flamingo has disappeared completely so I thought that if, you know, I'd bring you some more wood. So right now you have the uh, island accentuated. Mm -hmm. But in order to be more realistic, naturalistic, you will need to add some little plants around this. So we brought some new plants, two types of plants, Brasiliensis and Tanellus. And these are stronger, more accentuated plants and we can use them at the two sides. I'm moving with the Brasiliensis and I'm gonna put that on the other side of this rock to have some more detail there. We've got a big patch of Anubias. Look at this. Wow, and you wow. can just take off a little bit of it and use it in between the new rocks. Here's an empty spot in between this and that. Mm -hmm. If you want to clean the uh, green rocks, you can use a brush or you can use wow. a metallic brush. If you scrape it off, you see how the green tint started to slowly yeah, disappear absolutely. from it? We will have the hoses cleaned, plus we will have the CO2 diffuser cleaned. So these are the two last steps after we're ready. I would probably just remove this. The 
pressure just pushed it out. This is very important. This should not be full of algae for two reasons. One is ugly. Two, the bubbles will be bigger if this clogs. And you need small CO2 bubbles to be dissolved better in the, in the water. Gary has already prepared us the solution. It should not get into your eyes. It has chlorine in it, so mm -hmm. you can smell the chlorine probably already. Can you smell it? Oh yeah. Okay, so Smells you just like put it in pool. like this. Yeah, like a swimming pool. Put it in mm -hmm. and just hold it there for a couple of minutes. And then you take it out, you rinse it. It's completely clean, Okay. but you need to rinse it on the tap water and make sure that any solution that gets inside of this, you need to shake it out. Just make sure that you don't shake it on your pants. Check yeah. that towel out. That got some. <laughs> and what I do is I suck out all the debris and all the ugly things that mm -hmm. stay on there and see that I'm moving it gently so that I can see what's, what else is moving in the grass. Try to do that part as well. Just move it gently like shake it a little bit. And it's also a wise idea to put a mat or something on the floor. Yeah, you can suck it out, absolutely. I feel like a dentist assistant. Don't take it out of the water because if it's filled with air, then it won't suck anymore. And at the end, you close the tap. And after you close the tap, you take it out. See? Wow, Check this it's out. so clean. This is a cleaning solution, by the way, ADA Supers. I pour some on top and I just put this inside uh -huh. the top because it fits perfectly and it's enough for it. So you don't need more. When you fill it up with tap water, you will need to neutralize the tap water with Secam Prime or any other dechlorinator. You just fill it up with water. I know it's not by the book. And then you apply this on uh -huh. top before you start the filter and yeah. the fish are going to be fine. We did this for years. I know it's not very scientific because the chlorine from the tap water gets into the tank uh -huh. anyway, but this one, the moment that you apply it, it will neutralize it instantaneously within, within a second. After you did the maintenance, you restarted the skimmer. After about two, three hours, clean the skimmer again. See, so I just break it towards the front like this. Okay, and then there's this little sponge, which you can take out and it's gonna be full with stuff. So you can take this whole thing with you in the bathroom and then just rinse it. Gary is gonna show us how to clean the hoses. If you don't do this, the organic residue inside the hoses yeah, will restrict the flow and it looks ugly. We stopped the filter. We closed the lever on the filter. So I push it and then I can remove the filter head adapter. He lifts the hose filled with water because there's a tap closed at the bottom. And then he tries to kind of break it a little bit. He releases some of the water in the cup. Okay, so I got so many presents. Can I get a Gary for my tank? Like like my own Gary? You have to yeah. discuss it Ask with my Gary. wife. <laughs> <laughs> push it up, push it up. Yeah, and that's, that's it. And this will hold it in place here. The pressure side. Don't use the same brush, the hose brush for the glass, because if you use the hose brush for the glass, you can actually break the glass with that. He has the spring brush from the ADA, and that spring brush goes into the glass. All right, guys, so what did you do? Yeah, we, we got the um, pipes cleaned. So how did you do it? Nice I washed one. Gary. So let's mount it back. The suction side should be filled with water. And you don't want air bubble at the top. <clears throat> if you have air bubble at the top, the water is not going to go into the filter that easily. You have to remember which one was the suction side. What if I don't? You can go along the hose to the bottom and there's Check. a sign. Ah, okay. And it says like in and out or there's an arrow. So I guess the suction one is pointing in. Yep. Just make sure that you don't push it in too much when you push it back, right? Because if you push it in too much, I'm scared of this part. You should be because you can break it easily, but then uh, with a little experience, you're going to be fine. I promise you. Now he's filling it up with water all the way. Mm -hmm. And then he fits in that side and then it goes in. So you have to be very careful when you move the hose adapter. Ideally, if you have your husband here, mm -hmm. he should hold the 
glass while you manipulate it. You have all the tech now on this side and the curtain will hopefully yeah, you know, hide everything, cover some of it, and you will be able to see what you did and to see the, the drop checker from this side. You got it? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. I just, just need to figure out what to do. Push oh, it yeah. in. It's really easy. It clicks. Did it click? Yeah. Midway. That's it. Don't open the tap before you have all the stripes on the intake covered. If you do it while there's air mm -hmm. being able to get into it, then you're gonna have air here and you're gonna have a problem priming the filter. Don't push it. <laughs> now this is under pressure. And yeah. Careful, yeah. Always direct it on the side glass. It's too much. Still, you can do water change, a full water change with putting it in and taking the water out at the same time. Aren't you just sucking out the water that you're just adding? No, because yes, I am, but then I'm rinsing it out and then I'm diluting the water. I don't really like this, uh, this pistol at the end this gun, you cannot adjust the flow rate with it. Uh, and then the, but you can adjust it. You can? Yeah, there's a level. Oh, there's a level, okay. And restarting the filter, yeah, and, and the skimmer. Filter. Look what it gave us back. Oh. What I suggest you to do is to keep the water change hose with you, the hose that leads the water to the toilet, with you until you start the filter. So when you start the filter, you can suck out that first puff ah, of, okay. of dirty water, and then you can pack the hoses and, and, and leave. I see. But in a couple of minutes, the filter is going to clean it up. We didn't talk about filter cleaning. That's another thing that yeah. you need to do. You need to close the filter tap first, the filter head adapter tap first and then you have four levers on the filter head which you can remove and then you can take the whole canister or your husband can take it because it's probably eight or ten kilos it's a big filter filled with water and he can take it to the bathroom and you can rinse it but rinse it in in aquarium water or in water that has been treated with prime because if you rinse the filter media in water full of chlorine it will kill the bacteria and you need the bacteria in the filter. There are trays in the filter, and you take the filter tray out, and then you rinse it in that water. How often? Once every six months, okay. or every four months. You will see that when the filter clogs, and the tap is already open fully, and there's the pressure is not enough, mm -hmm. it means that you need to clean the filter. Anyways, we're done for today, and you guys are gonna see the end result of this maintenance session. I really hope that Chills is able to do it by herself or with the help of the husband, but now you're the brain, so you know everything, right? Yeah, and I, I will just look at the video if I have to. All right, guys, we're gonna say goodbye here. Don't forget to subscribe if you didn't do so yet. Hit that like button, hit that bell button, because many people will not get notified if they don't hit the bell button. I just realized that. They don't even know that a Green Aqua video came out. This is very important. And also, if you want to become a channel member, please consider becoming a channel member, because that will help the video production. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.